So we whip out our formulas for surface area and volume of a cylinder, and we just play. So they tell us that the surface area is 245, and that's supposed to equal, I know the height is 10, so 2 times 10 will be 20 pi r plus 2 pi r squared. And this is enough to solve for r, right? And so if I put that equal to 0, I can just say that uh, 0 will equal 2 pi r squared plus 20 pi r minus 245. Now, at this point, it's like, okay, well, it's a quadratic, so I can definitely solve it with quadratic formula, which I think is what I would do on the test. Um, and I'll sh show you that now, right? So our a is just 2 pi, and our b is just 20 pi, and our c is just negative 245, and just suck it up and go, right? So it's going to be uh, negative, let's throw this, so it's negative b plus or minus the square root b squared, so 400 pi squared minus 4 times a, which is 2 pi, times c, which is just negative 245, all over 2a, which is 2 pi. And when you simplify this, plus or minus, that's 400 pi squared, and then that ends up being uh, plus 1960 pi, and then that's all over 4 pi. So the minus minus made a plus, 4 times 2 times 245 was 1960. Can't combine those because that's pi squared and that's pi. So that's as good as it gets, but we do have a calculator. So if you just plug this all in on the calculator, uh, you just crunch it in, making sure you have parentheses around the entire top and around the entire inside of that square root. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but, but that's what it looks like. And just pop that all in, and you do indeed get that the radius is about 2.9999, which is about 3. And once you know that the radius is 3, you can pop that in uh, to your volume equation, which is what they wanted. So the volume is 90 pi, and you pop that in on your calculator, and 90 pi is approximately 283. So I would do it that way. It's precise. You know it. You've got a calculator. Might as well. The way they do it, uh, <laughs> they, they rigged it. Um, they, because they said approximately in the beginning, so they let you take some liberties. And they divide this whole thing by 2 pi. And so you get uh, that 0 equals, and this side as well, right? So 0 divided by 2 pi is still 0. So 0 equals r squared plus 20 divided by 2 is 10r, and the pi's cancel. And then you, you still kind of do 245 divided by 2 pi on your calculator. And it's so stupid, too, because you have to do 2 pi. Uh, you can't just do 6, because they get 39 um, if they do exactly 2 pi. So on your calculator, it's 245 divided by, open up some parentheses to make sure it divides by the whole thing, you get 39. If you approximate that as 6, you end up getting like 41, and then this doesn't factor nicely if you do it that way. So it's, I don't really like the book's answer, but it's okay. We, it, it's still good to be able to approximate. They rigged this so that this factors nicely. This is r plus 13 r minus 3. This was supposed to be minus, my bad. Uh, just lost that sign. So r could be minus 13 or 3. And so, of course, the radius can't be negative, so it's 3, which is the same thing we got earlier, right? Uh, so there's that. Oh, and, uh, and when I plugged in this on my calculator, I only did the positive one because, of course, if I did negative 20 minus something, I'm going to get negative, and that's not going to be a possible radius for a real-life thing. Whew. Yeah. So that's what the back of the book was doing, but I wouldn't have done that. I would have just like, bite the bullet and just do your quadratic formula.